What's up everybody? This is Future Automation, a place where imagination meets reality and you are listening to Tejas. So guys, welcome back to part 2 of Gmail analysis using Python where we are going to do some more interesting stuff. And without taking any delay and with a cup of coffee, let's get started. So guys, in previous video, we have seen how to access emails using IMAPLib and what I thought is <coughs> accessing email is fine at still some extent, but then what? What if we want to filter out some emails? What if we want to delete some emails? What as a matter of fact, what if we want to download some attachments without going to the app or the browser? So I digged a bit deeper into the IMAPLib library and tried to figure out whether we can perform all these operations. So to my surprise and also to your surprise, it is really interesting what we can do with IMAPLib and Python. So let's go to the coding But Before that, I would like to give you a quick demo of what exactly we are going to achieve in today's video and how we are going to do that. We'll see later. Okay. So here I have opened, uh, at one side we are having my email ID, which I usually use for testing and for uh, YouTube videos. One side we are having the code, which is ready. And then... We are having a folder in which uh, as of now you can see we are only having two folders and other than that we don't have anything. So today's target to achieve is that number one, we are going to filter out all the emails, specific emails and we are going to learn how to do that. Second, we are going to delete emails uh, from the email inbox. Number three, we are going to understand how to run a code or a program at the startup of the windows which i told you in the last time that we are going to take a look at this part and number four which is the most interesting part that is how to download the attachments and save them in a specific folder so this folder which I have shown you just now is the folder that I have specified to download the attachments and we are having two emails which are having attachments in it and technically these two attachments that is git gif file and one png file should be stored in that folder when we run this code. So that is how we are going to do it. Now let's run the code and see if this works or not and here is the program which is running. Now for the filter part, I am only filtering all the emails which I have received from Google and but this is only for the filter. In the backend, it will obviously store the attachments of these two files and other than Google, it will not show. For the deleting part, I have still kept that in comments. So ultimately at the final execution of code and the final execution, I will show you how the deleting part works. If we we'll go to that folder and we'll see, then both the images you can see are available here. Now this is what we are going to do and it's pretty interesting what IMAP lab can, IMAP lib can do. So let's go to the code now. So guys, if those who have checked my previous video till here, all the code is pretty similar to what we have did last time and there is no much of a difference. So it will be easier for you guys to understand. Those who are new to this channel can get a glimpse of my previous video and then come back to this video so it will be easier. But still I will give you a brief idea. So here we are importing all the libraries except one library which is new in this code is OS library which we are using to get the path to join the path where we are going to store the file. Next to that we are having the credentials library which we use for username and password. We are initiating the MAPLib. We are selecting the inbox. We are searching for a specific section of emails that is all unseen as I explained in the last time. We are getting the first and the latest email ID. So the top the top one will be the latest one and the last one will be the bottom one will be the first email ID. Here we are traving, traversing to all the emails and we are getting the section of email that is the message where we are going to traverse the subject from and date. So here I have added a, a small filter again in the string which I use to remove the 
email ids which are shown in front of the from section just to give it a aesthetic look or probably a good look only the names of the people or names of the companies that have sent you an email although if you don't want this you can remove this part you can just make it comment out and you can make this part also comment out and things will work out again so that is how it should work but i'm not going to do that as of now okay next to that now here comes the four main objective number one filtering through the emails now we already have from where we have received the email what we need to do is just we add an if condition where it will only display the emails if the if condition gets satisfied so if i'm uh, adding here that if google in the name of the emails that are being sent to us then only it will show you can add anything say for example you want the emails from john or from tejas you can add here if I am getting any email from the just then only you can display it. So you can add that uh, <coughs> logic to any implementation. If you are removing this part and you want an email ID specific filter, you can add the email ID here and it will still work. Next to that, this is the main and interesting part and challenging part in this code because understanding these section will help you to understand how this thing is exactly working. So. <coughs> This is the part where we are downloading the attachments. Now, once we get the emails, what we are going to do is we are going to walk through the emails. Now, walking through the emails is email are having different section in different types of content. So, HTML content, text, ASCII text content. We are having the email IDs, we are having subject, we are having dates. Now, walking through each part is going to give us the freedom of getting the attachments or anything as a matter of fact. To do with that email so what we are going to do is we are going to get part of this email and then we are going to check if the content underscore main type is equal to multi-part so what is multi-part in email exactly so multi-part in email is like a way of coding possibly multiple data elements in the single body it means that you can have attachments or any other HTML content in that email ID. So if we are having such kind of thing, that means we are having attachment, possibly attachment in this email. And then we are going to continue. Now next to that, content disposition. So what is content disposition? Basically, it indicates that the data should be displayed, displayed automatically. So there are different types of, again, content disposition in it. So one is inline. Inline means if the data should be uh, displayed automatically and prompt in browser when we are going to uh, open that attachment the second one type is attachment where it, it should uh, user should re receive a prompt say for example save as inbox and that so if this content disposition is none then we can continue with the saving part so basically not the attachments which we do we can directly download them but when we click on them they give us a pop-up like it will open or it will ask us to save as that kind of thing now here we are having another function which we use to get the name of the file that is attached in the uh, attachments for example here git merge.gif is the name of the file that will be stored in this now if we have the file name then only we are going to get ahead with saving the file so this that is what we are checking here so if bool file name so if we are having file name then only we'll go ahead and we'll execute the further Process. So all the emails below which are not having any kind of attachments, it will not worry about this to perform these operations. Now next to that, we'll go to the next. So file path, we are going to get the file path here now. So the way we create file path is, we are going to use the join function in the os.path, which will attach this whole path together and it will give us a total file path. So say for example, c, c colon slash user slash pages slash document slash the file name that is gif gif for example next to that what we are going to do is uh, we are going to check if the file is already available or not so for that we use the is file function so if it is a regular file that the path already exists the full path including the file name already exists then that means that the file is already available and we don't have to perform the further operations but if we are not having the file then it will open the file path it will save the file and it will close that file path so that is how the file handling operations take place here so this is uh, i know it is a small code 
but if you will understand this part probably you will have a uh, freedom of working more deep in this code and you can perform some more actions say for example read the file understand what is in the file and then give a brief summary about what exactly is in the file for the user so that he can uh, decide whether we need to keep the we need to keep the file or not so that is what it is now next third part is to delete an email so to delete let me just uncomment this file so deleting an email is pretty simple we already have all the emails that we need to filter out and then we need to just have have a filter here that is if the uh, so here I have kept my name if I'll do here a Google in email from then what we'll do we'll say my mail dot store so store is another function which will perform an action on the email it will get the email that we we are supposed to <coughs> delete it will uh, it will select the flag option and then it will mark it as deleted so here these two are related to the action that we are performing so there are different flags that is a uh, mark as read, mark as unread. We are having deleted, move to different uh, in move to different folder and stuff. Yeah, so that is what we are doing here. We are adding the flag as deleted. So that is this is another function that is mymail.expunge, which which you can also use to delete the emails permanently. Now, if we are going, we are to run this code again to see if the emails are getting deleted or not. Let's run it. Now it is again fetching all the emails. I should have removed that code. It will take some more time. No worries. Uh, Google is not having much emails that have been sent to me. Okay, we are waiting. We are waiting, and it's done. So if I'll refresh this email inbox, you can see all the emails which are sent by Google are deleted. So that's it. I know I don't know why this one is left, but you can understand the gist. Probably you will have to do some more RD why this email is not deleted. But basically, that is the idea. So if you want to delete any useless email, see for example, <coughs> that's how we do it. Now, the last and the final part of this whole code, and ah yeah, of course, last two lines. So we close the email instance and we log out from the email. That is very important. Don't keep it logged in. Yeah. Next to that, what we are going to do is we are going to run this code on startup. So to do that, we'll click on this file. We'll use the save as button. And then we are going to go to a location. I will mention all these details. In the description, all the links of the previous video for those who have not watched it will be in the description. So make sure you uh, check out the description. So here we go to the same location and add this location also in this. So here you need to save this file. Now there are two things you need to keep in mind. If you want to run a console or if you are having any UI in this uh, file or in this code or in this project, Make sure you save it with the .py. But if you don't want any, if you are having a, only a background task that you are running, and then you do want the console to come out every time you start up the window, you just make sure you add a .pyw tag, so it will not show you the console. Now every time whenever I'm going to start the windows, it will run this code. Probably you can add a time a delay here, say for example 10 seconds or 20 seconds. So it will wait for a while to get Windows startup and settled and then it will start working because sometimes you not have the internet connected or probably you can run a loop here to wait until the network is connected and then you can run this code but probably you can add a delay because anytime anyhow whenever we are starting up the windows we are going we connect to the internet first and then we start working with whatever our work is usually I can say. So this is the code guys. It's pretty simple. It's not that complicated. Once you'll understand the basics of all this, uh, it's easy to perform different op op operations. You can combine both the codes from the previous and the next one. It's already combined and you can perform some different actions. So again, uh, if you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for such amazing content. Uh, I'll keep on uploading new videos uh, for soon again. And this one was pretty fast because uh, a lot of my viewers and friends have uh, asked me for the next video so I was really happy with all the feedback thank you guys for all the views 
and uh, or add your all your comments and also check out the github link that i have added for the code and all and uh, make a pull request if you want to add anything and of course you can contribute to it add your comments hit like share subscribe my videos and as i always say keep innovating thank you guys take care